Hi everyone, so welcome to another video. I start teaching next week at my university and at some point in our academic careers I think it's inevitable that if we are teaching class is going to go wrong. Now it could be a lab class, a tutorial, a seminar, a lecture, you never know when it's going to creep up on you and you're going to have a disaster of a lesson. Um, so in this video I thought I'd share some things that can go wrong and ways that we can try to survive our teaching and get out of that lesson in one piece. My very first lecture I was obviously a brand new lecturer, I was new to the university, I was giving a class to all the first years, so it was a first year lecture. I prepared all my lecture notes and then the morning of the lecture I woke up and I'd lost my voice pretty much. And I thought it's fine, I can use the microphone in the lecture theatre, they'll be able to hear me, it'll be great. And then when I got to the lecture theatre I realised that I was timetabled for one of the rooms that did not have a microphone. It was hilarious trying to croak my way through a two-hour lecture. It was the first time I'd met the students. I was desperate to make a really good impression. Um, so yeah, stuff just happens. Um, if you're new to teaching, welcome to this world where things can go wrong. If you are a seasoned professor or a seasoned academic, maybe your, your teaching has been smooth running, but Honestly, I think most of my academic colleagues have had at least one moment where things haven't gone to plan. Going to the wrong lecture theatre or the wrong lab can happen, not only for students, but also for the academics. Um, the only way to mitigate against this really is to study your timetable. And if you're using a room that you've not used before, I would do a reconnaissance trip like the day before or the week before. Just go and check out where you're going to be teaching, what the equipment is and just physically how do you get into the room? Because some of them have got like weird back doors into lecture theatres, some of them have like key code entry pad stuff. So yeah, the only way <laughs> to mitigate against going to the wrong room is to really kind of physically try to find it the day or the week before. Once you've found the room, um, even if you prepared all your materials beautifully, the university IT might still let you down. Um, I touched on this in a previous video, you know, it's soul destroying when you get there and then you realise that the computer equipment is not going to work and it's not going to cooperate with you. I had one great lecture a couple of years ago where I had a new laptop but it was a USB-C connecting laptop, so I didn't have the right cable in my backpack to connect it to the computer kind of tech in the room. The computer in the room had failed, so I couldn't use that. Um, I stupidly didn't have my notes in a hard copy, so I couldn't project them. So I ended up like wedging my laptop, projecting the slides on my laptop underneath the projector. <laughs> and they were like balanced on a textbook um, and projecting them up onto the screen so the students could see them. It was a very jaunty arrangement. I'm sure if anybody had come in to assess my lecture that day, <laughs> it would probably have raised some eyebrows. So yeah, IT equipment can and will fail on you. Any pictures or diagrams, I make sure I've got something on paper that I can put under the projector if I really need to. Um, and always have either some chalk or some pens. So there's always the option then to handwrite anything that you need the students to see. The other thing I think we can do as academics is um, equip ourselves with a almost like a safety net, a list of contact numbers that we would use mid-class if we needed to. So most lecture theatres um, these days will have a phone set up in them. Um, so I make sure that I know the IT phone number for emergency problems with the lecture theatre. I make sure that I have the security phone number for campus. Um, I make sure I know what I would phone in case of a medical emergency. Um, yeah, I just like to have those phone numbers with me so that if something does happen, I can phone and I can get support and then I'm not tackling the disaster or the problem by myself. So yeah, backup phone numbers is definitely something to have in your back pocket if you're going to be teaching class. 
one of the things I think that especially maybe as newer lecturers we fear, maybe I just fear it, maybe you're totally fine with this, um, but it's of course the technical content, so your subject content going wrong. The ideal, of course, is that we don't make errors in our lectures, but inevitably it is going to happen from time to time. You know, I'll be doing something and I'll notice maybe that the math isn't going to lead us to the place I thought we were going to land. It could be that the integral is out, I've used the wrong parameters, I've missed a summation, I've not used the right sign. Um, when you're practicing maybe before the lecture, you know, it's quite easy to do the derivations, but sometimes doing it in front of a crowd, you know, a hundred, couple of hundred people, it can put the pressure on a little bit. So if it goes wrong, and it has gone wrong for me, if it goes wrong, take a deep breath. Um, I usually call it out straight away. The second I see it's not right, I'll say to the lecture theatre, oh, I think something's gone a bit wrong here. Um, I think I probably missed something in my, my notes. Um, sometimes a student will be able to help and they'll, they'll suggest where they think it's kind of gone wrong in the technical work and you can correct yourself. Sometimes I'll take a few minutes and I will go and check the notes that I brought with me to class to try to spot my error. Um, and if I really can't spot it, I can just stop the class at that point and say, OK, there's an error here. I'm not quite sure where it's crept in. This is what I was trying to show. We'll come back to it in a future lecture just to make sure you have it right for your notes and we'll move on to the next bit of the course. Of course, you're not always going to be in a lecture theatre. You know, it depends on your subject. I'm a scientist, so some of my classes are in labs. Um, that brings with them a whole range of things that can go wrong, from broken equipment you might have, to spilt chemicals, um, to people not handling things correctly. Uh, again, the way that I kind of prepare myself for lab class is I, I make sure I know the experiments. If I've got PhD students helping me in that class demonstrating, I, I make sure I've introduced myself to them so I know who my points of contact are that I can call if I need support. I make sure I know the laboratory rules and actually who's running the laboratory from a, a technical and health and safety perspective. And then you just sort of got to go with it. So if things happen and don't go to plan, you know, I might ask students to stay still if there's chemicals involved and we need to clean something up. Um, my main priority in the lab is keeping everybody safe. Uh, so yeah, if things don't go to plan, I don't worry so much about the imparting of my knowledge at that moment in time. I worry about making sure that everybody's fine and safe um, and then they're confident to keep progressing with the lab class. But I have asked students to stop doing something before. Um, you know, I have turned off equipment when I didn't think the student was ready to quite use that bit of equipment. So yeah, uh, I think when you're in a lab class, you just need to keep looking everywhere. To, to make sure that everybody is progressing okay with the work. Demos are hilarious. Um, you can practice a demonstration and then you get into the lecture theatre and then for whatever reason it might not work on you. Um, quite a good idea there is to film a backup of the experiment or what you were trying to show. So if the demonstration fails in real time, you can resort to showing a video. Um, every year I think I'm going to introduce more demos into my lectures and um, yeah, I, I need to do it more. You know, I'm, I'm gonna, I teach a lecture course where I could do more demonstrations, but uh, maybe that's one for a future year. But I'd love to know, have you, have you had any class disasters? Has your teaching at university been smooth sailing and nothing's gone wrong? Or have you had a moment where you thought, oh gosh, I don't know quite what's happening here. And I don't quite know how I'm going to fix this for the class to continue. Let me know in the comments, you know, what you think of teaching and whether you've had any crazy or disastrous moments. Um, if you specialise only in research, that can also come with its own set of interesting moments, but that is probably for a future video. So have a fab week as always. If you're back at university, I hope things are progressing really nicely. I'm meeting my new chief, my new tutees this week, which will be really cool. Um, and as I said, we're back into lectures the week after. So stay safe, leave me a comment, like and subscribe, all that usual awesome stuff. And I will see you next Monday. Bye.